Do you ever just stop and think like, where are we right now? Shit is accelerating very fast and it's getting real. If you've been keeping up uh, with this new recent breakthroughs that have happened, you've probably seen two different ma major things. We're, we're getting to the point where we're having signs of AGI and we don't see it yet. The models don't have these things put into them, but there's two things. One is called continuous back propagation, which means if you chat with a current LLM, they have this cutoff date. They say, our data stops here. We can't tell you anything present unless we just go Google search it, right? But continuous back propagation works more so like a human brain, how you continuously move forward throughout time as a human. And whenever you learn new things, you make these things called synaptic connections that forms a neuron of data that you have learned. And Whenever you make new synaptic connections, your older connections or your older memory start to like fade away a little bit, but you can always go back and retrieve something from like your childhood. Similar things we are now doing with neural networks in AI systems. Continuous back propagation says that there's no longer going to be a timestamp or a cutoff date on the data of these systems. They're going to continuously learn and from that data, feedback into the neural network and the unimportant things that it doesn't it isn't prompted to ever use those things will leave the neural network just like how the human brain works it's going to be continuously growing and adapting in the environment that it is within so what does this really mean it's more so like a being than just a snapshot or an instance of intelligence that is cut off here and there it's not that it's now continuous. It has a full loop instead of just a straight line. It's not discrete. It's continuous, right? So that is one of the breakthroughs. Number two is this thing called infinite context window, which you can probably easily imagine what that means. So humans, for example, have an infinite context window. Whenever I go to chat GPT currently and I prompt it, there is a 4,000 token limit. So I can prompt it with about 4,000 words and um, have it do whatever I want it to do with just that. But an infinite context window is quite obvious. It's infinite, <laughs> it like moves about infinitely throughout space. So it can continuously collect data and back propagate it into the neural network. And it has an infinite context length, infinite context window. So what is that? What is that system? Well, that is a baby form of AGI. It's not very, like if you did that on current AI, it would be a baby form of AGI that's not very intelligent. It would be as smart as a high schooler that um, is almost like a little being. It can walk around and learn things on its own. It's a baby AGI, but it's not hyper intelligent. The interesting thing is this new strawberry model, Project Strawberry or QSTAR, is made, it's built to create synthetic data, right? And this type of synthetic data it makes is reasoning and planning based data. It's cognition, really. So whenever you as a human approach a complex problem, you run these internal monologues, which are reasoning. You have these different tools in different frameworks that you have picked up over time, whether it's first principles thinking or second order consequences, or just relating to adjacent topics to each other to see what is similar and what is different. Right? So you have these different tools for reasoning based tasks. And how do you as a human develop these tools? Well, you read about them or you learn about them from a mentor or you try and you fail and you try again and you get better results and you feed that back into your neural network. Well, what, how does QSTAR work? Well, QSTAR, similar to your brain, is predicting the next token. What you are doing whenever you run your internal monologue, whenever you're thinking about something with cognition is you're predicting the next token using these frameworks that you have learned. So let's ask ourselves, what is AI doing whenever it's putting all this text on the screen? It's not an internal monologue, it's an external monologue. So it's still thinking, but it shows it to us and because we engineered it to do so, because it would be dangerous for it to have an internal monologue. We could totally give it an internal monologue if we really wanted to. We don't have to show the users what the thing is thinking. They do this on purpose so we understand what is happening. 
behind closed doors. We can see what is happening, right? So it has an external monologue. We have an internal monologue. What is the difference? I'm predicting the next token whenever I approach a complex problem and I think about it hard. All I'm doing is predicting the next token in a pattern. Those patterns are forms of first principles thinking, uh, comparing and contrasting adjacent uh, solutions and problems. There's different things that I use. These are tools in my tool belt whenever I approach something complex. Now, whenever an AI is trained on text produced by Strawberry, which Strawberry is a reasoning based model, the output of this model is cognition, right? Whenever Orion, the thing that's being trained on Strawberry, whenever it's trained on these patterns of next token prediction, it does the same thing. It reasons with the same patterns of next token prediction. Because whenever we reason, we just reason in patterns of next token prediction. It's not deflationary of humans to say such a thing at all. This is objectively speaking what is happening, right? So what does this mean? Whenever we have Project Strawberry, whenever we have continuous backpropagation, and we have infinite context windows, all put into the same model, what does that create? Artificial general intelligence. AGI. So the likelihood that AGI exists in a lab right now seems to be almost 100%. Not, now nothing is ever 100%, but it seems to be extremely high. Because if I understand these things, the engineers, what's there are thousands of them, what do you think they know? Because I'm definitely not uh, some like computer science engineer that knows how to build these things, right? And if I can understand these simple concepts, it's very likely that they have built some form of model that integrates all of them together. That's just a reasonable assumption I can make. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I think. So what does this mean? AGI doesn't mean it's going to be here in GPT-6 or GPT-7 even, or definitely not GPT-5. Maybe it is. I don't know, but it is going to come and it's likely that we already have a baby form of it, right? And they're just making it safer. They're testing it, scrutinizing it, seeing how they can make it better and safer before they give it to the public, which is correct. But it's not as far as people think. There's so many people who have these ideas that, oh, LLMs will never be AGI. But what is our brain? Our brain is a hacked together piece of matter that does these certain systems. While yes, LLMs won't be the perfect final form of super intelligence or the best form of an AGI system, they can still complete tasks similar if not comparable or even better than a human brain in the near future and have cognition and learning capabilities that are better than a human brain in the near future. Now, there's something that we are approaching by 2030 it's called Moore's Wall, where we're going to scale transistors or GPUs. We're going to scale the transistors down to a scale that is so small that an electron cannot properly pass to the next transistor and the computation no longer works. It becomes stochastic or non-deterministic, and we need a completely new paradigm of computing to continue Moore's Law because we're going to hit a wall by 2030. We've already done the mathematical models. This is true. But this is some, there's this company called Extropic by Guillaume Verdun. You may have heard of it. Building something called a thermodynamic computer, which their goal is to catch the stochastic nature of the, the electrons at that very micro scale and continue scaling it downwards past Moore's wall. And I think it's quite likely they'll probably have a good good enough product to do that by 2030. Um, so they're catching Moore's wall and we're gonna continue scaling. And if you look at thermodynamic computing and you run the simulations and mathematical models and you simulate scaling this down, you're not gonna get close to the land hours limit, but what you can do is become a hundred million times more efficient energy wise and um, computationally wise than the current paradigm of computing. The current paradigm of classical GPUs, classical computing with transistors that we have today, which is more efficient also than the human brain, which sounds absolutely insane, but we can make those computers more efficient than a human brain. 
super intelligence is not as far as people think. It'll probably be here in the 2030s. And then the singularity might be a little bit longer because it takes time to build infrastructure to cause rapid change. Uh, but we're already building the infrastructure. We started years ago and we're continuing to build it. So we'll see how long it takes to build the infrastructure to cause such a rapid change known as the singularity. So 2045 singularity may be still a thing. But what we can say for sure is rapid developments in physics will be here sooner than change at the meso scale. The micro scale of understanding theoretical physics and the natures of reality and what is possible for humans to uh, create technologies um, around to to capture new forms of power new capabilities that we never thought were imaginable what are the possibilities for that almost a hundred percent if you look at somebody like nima i forget it how you pronounce his uh, middle name nima arcana ahmed hamid I'll put his name up on the screen. But if you look at what he is doing in the realm of theor theoretical physics, he is looking at this geometrical structure in higher dimensions called the amplitudehedron. And what you can do is mathematically model the amplitudehedron with some form of differential ge geometry. And you can tie it down into the fabric of reality with math. So you can extrapolate the math into the amplitudehedron and tie it down into the fabric of reality. And we can say, okay, there are so many more dimensions here that we were barely even aware of before. In space-time, which is the a reality I observe, we have four dimensions. Three-dimensional space plus time. So three dimensions plus one, space, time, right? So what if there's fifth, sixth, seventh, 14, 100,000 dimensions? That is possible. We don't know how it's going to look exactly, but here's a quote for you. So, not a quote, but a story. Back in the day, whenever the th theoretical physicists were having theories about in the internet, this is like after electricity was a thing, and we were theorizing, what could, how could we instantaneously send a message to somebody through the air? They're, they're trying to mathematically model it. They're, they come up with this theory. Everybody thinks there's some religious spiritual guru that's absolutely insane. When they say, oh, I can send you a message through the air. Everybody's like, you're insane. That's never going to be possible. Nonsense, right? And then they do work on this. They create mathematical models and says, okay, well, this could be possible. This, like we have math that says it could be possible. We don't know for sure. We don't have any empirical evidence, but there is likelihood that this could be possible. And then people say, okay, Mr. Theoretical Physicist, you're proving all of these theories of math. You're doing all this theoretical work, but what does it mean? Why are you telling me this? And the theoretical physicist says, yes, this is theory right now, but one day you will be taxed on this. And that was the invention of the transistor, which led to the invention of the internet. And we're going to have many more breakthroughs like this that we can hardly comprehend. And we already have be beginning evidence of this dating back 10 years from now. So Google Nima Arkani Hamid, Google the Amplitudehedron, and Google Space Time is Dead. And you will see that there are powers that we can harness in other dimensions outside of the fabric of space time that could potentially manipulate the fabric of space time if we understand how to create technologies that can manipulate the powers within those dimensions. And the way I'm saying it is probably inaccurate. I will say that. But the the possibility of doing so is very extremely high um a fun one to think about is like oh what if we have some device where we can do telekinesis like an alien would that's not outside of the realm of possibility but we don't really know this is all theory right now but i have a a, a very high suspicion that this will become technology and not a very long time from now to think that quantum mechanics the current paradigm of quantum mechanics at those micro scales is the last form of physics that we'll really have 
is absolutely absurd to me. I'm much more of a fan of the Albert Einstein theory that we just don't know enough yet and we haven't finished quantum mechanics. It might be entirely plausible that we need to go to a, another dimension to finish the entire mathematical equation to fully understand what is quantum mechanics and what is beyond the Planck length because it's just not within the fabric of space-time. It goes into a different dimension. We have this very simplified view of what the universe actually is. And these are things that the leading physicists in the world are currently talking about, which is why if you want to stay ahead on artificial intelligence, you shouldn't be researching artificial intelligence. You should be researching what are the theoretical physicists saying? And then very soon you should be researching what is super intelligence saying about theoretical physics? What is it saying and how can we use super intelligence to build technology within the realm of physics? Approaching it as a oh, let's use AI to build tools is a great thing for now, but it's not the end game. All of these tools are gonna become arbitrary very soon. Um, that's a little rant for a different time, but I had to get that off my chest. <laughs> We're going to be approaching some quite amazing times, and I think things are gonna be absolutely fantastic. And I'm just so fucking excited, as you can tell. Just to wrap everything up, go ahead and hit the like button below, comment uh, any questions or ideas you have or anything that was intellectually stimulating in the video, and hit the subscribe button if this is content you find enjoyable and insightful, because um, I'm super excited for things such as the singularity, and if you understand how transformative that's going to be, this entire YouTube channel is gonna be talking about how can we learn today the skills that will make us deadly or not deadly but like valuable in the future make us very uh very powerful individuals in the future as we do approach the singularity because physics will give us these new powers that we never knew were possible before after the singularity this is my belief um we have yet to find out if it will be true but i am very confident i can say yeah it's likely that we're going to see some new some new physical things that we can manipulate with technology and give us new capabilities as humans. It might be something that seems alien-like compared to what we were like right before the singularity. Um, and this is something I firmly believe in. So, if you like to talk about these topics, I have a free community linked in the description below. Feel free to join, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will see you in the next video.